Welcome to the National Museum of African American History and Culture's Joyful Fridays program. My name is Arielle and I'm going to be learning and creating with you today along with my teammate Tammy. Hi friends, I'm so thrilled to have you all here with us today for our ABC Joyful Fridays as we explore I is for interesting. We are really excited to have so many people joining us today. Thank you for being here. During our program, we are going to read a page from the Joyful ABCs book. And there it is right there. We are going to look at museum objects together and we're going to create some art. Every week, we are going to explore one of the many things that make you, you, and all of the amazing things that you can do. Looks like we're all ready. Give me two thumbs up. If you're ready, I'm ready. Arielle, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. All right, everyone. People like you and people like me can have so many different ways to be. Today, we are learning about one of those ways that you can feel and you can be, and it starts with the letter I. What words do you know that start with the letter I? This one's a little tricky this week because Words with I, there was not as many sometimes, but I think if we think really hard, we might be able to think of some. You can feel free to tell us those in the chat while we wait. Tammy, what are some words that you know that start with the letter I? I'm thinking of the word ice and the word iguana. Hmm. And I noticed with those two words, Ice has that long I sound and iguana has that more like a I mm -hmm. sound. <laughs> um, I was thinking of some words earlier and two words that I was thinking of are imagination and which we're going to be using a lot of today and ibis, which is a type of a bird. Are there any words, I words in our chat? Let's see, I know that some friends are thinking of the word ice cream. Mm -hmm. Some friends might be thinking of the word, um, what, was, what was I thinking of earlier? Oh, you said iguana, but isn't there another animal called like an impala or something like that? An impala? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. have you heard that word before? Anyways, there's icicle, there's ivory, there is interesting. Hmm. Iguanodon. Hmm. There is icing and there's impossible. Any other words? Hmm. I'm. I'm, I, if. Including. Including, inclusive. Yeah, I words, there's a, it's kind of sometimes it's kind of hard to think of them. Oh, an in any like my belly button, someone said, <laughs> or an insect, or the word in or inside. I think someone well, made a sentence. I'm oh. in it. Let's all start with I. Uh -huh, I'm in good. it. <laughs> oh, imposter. Ooh, that's an interesting word. Inches, ink. <laughs> Ooh, now we're getting some more in there. Well, as you all keep thinking, I wanna tell you which word we are actually gonna be learning about today. The word we are learning more about today is interesting. I is for interesting. Let's read a page from our book together to find out more about this special word. I is for interesting. Do you have unique ideas about how to solve problems? Do you eat different foods than other people you know? You are interesting. Remember that everyone has something special that makes them interesting too. And in our picture, it looks like there's different friends at the museum looking at different things that are interesting to them. Everyone has unique things about them. It could be the way that you do something or the way that you think. It could be the interesting hobby that you love to do or the way that you smile or the interesting things you've experienced. All of those things tell a story about who you are. We all have an important 
important and a very interesting story to tell the world. And when we make friends or we share time with our families, we can share interesting parts of ourselves with each other and learn more things about other people, learn more interesting things about them. One of the things that makes us interesting are the things that we are interested in. When you're interested in something or someone, it means that you want to know more about it and that you like learning about it or maybe that you already know a lot about it or maybe it's something you like looking at or like hearing and there's a lot of different kinds of people and places and things that we can be interested in. Today, I want to introduce you to an interesting person who is interested in a lot of people and things going on in his community. This is Reverend Henry Clay Anderson. He was a photographer. A photographer is a person who takes pictures with a camera, and Henry Clay Anderson took pictures with his camera in Mississippi, where he lived. When he was a child, his parents gave him a camera as a gift, and then he was interested in taking pictures ever since. We have one of his cameras one of, uh, in our museum. He took a lot of different kinds of pictures with this camera. Have you seen a camera like this before? This one is pretty old, so it might look a little bit different than something you're used to. Henry Clay Anderson took all kinds of pictures. He took over 4,000 that we have in our museum, and we're sharing the link to look at all 4,000 of them if you want to in our chat right now. He took pictures of families. He took pictures of things that were interesting to families. If you look at that first picture of a dad and a son, maybe they went fishing together and they're showing Henry Clay Anderson all of the fish that they caught, which I think is pretty interesting. There's a lot there. Henry Clay Anderson also took pictures of buildings and different events or special occasions. And sometimes he used his camera to take pictures of interesting things like this hat that this person is wearing. Now, Henry Clay Anderson uses pictures to take things that were interesting to him and interesting to other people. Today, we're gonna think about if we were photographers, and anyone can be a photographer, what we would be interested in taking a picture of. So we're gonna pretend to use Henry Clay Anderson's camera. Can everyone reach into the screen and take out his camera? You have to hold it in your hands like this. Got it? All right. Does everyone have their own camera ready? All right. Do you see where the arrow is pointing? It's pointing to the lens of the camera, and this is the part we're gonna use to really look closely at something, or we're gonna zoom out so we can see the whole thing. If you're feeling ready to be a photographer, hold your camera in one hand, and then give me a thumbs up with the other hand. Yami, I see you're ready over there, all right. Let's get started looking at something that we'd be interested in seeing if we were outside. If I was walking outside and I saw this really big tree, I'd be interested in seeing what kind of tree it is and maybe taking a closer look at the branches or the leaves on this really big tree. But first, I'll take a, pic a picture of just the big tree by itself. So everyone get your camera out and take one big picture of it. Click. Okay, now we're going to zoom in on some of the leaves. Is everyone ready to take their picture? Zoom in really, really close. One, two, three, and click. There's our picture. What do you see? I see some acorns in that tree, and that is really interesting because that means this is an oak tree. So because I was able to zoom in, I learned something I didn't know before. Let's zoom back out so we can see the whole tree. All right, what if we were looking at the tree and we saw something that was moving in the branches? What could it be? Our cameras can help us look really closely to see what that interesting thing making the branches move is. So everyone zoom in with your imaginary camera. And on the count of three, we're gonna take our picture one, two, 
tree and click. What did we find in the tree? I think we spotted a squirrel in the tree. I wonder if the squirrel is in the tree because there were acorns in the tree and squirrels like to eat acorns. That's pretty interesting. Let's look at one more thing and pretend we are visiting the museum. Now that is a really big art piece in our museum. It's like this, really, really big. And I think it's really interesting because it has so many different colors and textures on it. And I really love how bright it is. And there's these big shapes on it that look like clouds and raindrops. Tammy, what do you think is interesting about this art? And what would you be interested in looking more closely at? I'm taking a good look and I am interested in at the very bottom, there's this blue colorful piece of art. And I wonder what that is. So to get a closer look, can everyone let's zoom in with your imaginary cameras? All right, is it in focus? All right, good. We're gonna take a picture. One, two, three, click. Whoa, what do you see? Do you notice something that you've never seen before? I have never seen an artist use puzzle pieces in their work. That's really interesting. I, I think there's, a, there's so many puzzle pieces there. Yeah, there's a I lot. I could see that. I wonder I if he that. used just one puzzle or maybe a lot of puzzles put together. I'm mm. thinking that's a lot of puzzles. <laughs> Everyone, let's zoom back out so we can see the whole painting again. Now, Tammy, what else would you be interested in looking more closely at? This is exciting. I mm. want to know more about, I think, those black raindrops and that big black shape in the middle of the art piece. Mm -hmm. So to get a closer look, yep. let's get our camera. Let's zoom in. Mm -hmm. All right, on the count of three, we're gonna take our picture, okay? One, two, three, click. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So it looks a lot different now that it's close up. It looks like it could be shiny, something shiny on it. Maybe he used glitter to make it shine like that. Looks really sparkly. I think that's really interesting. That is interesting. He used puzzle pieces and glitter to make his work of art. That's pretty awesome too. Now I want to really know what is interesting to all of the friends that are joining us today. So I'd like to ask you one more question about our special word. Who or what do you find interesting? Can you tell us about something you think is interesting in our chat? What is something you would like to learn or read about? What do you already maybe know a lot about? Can you share something with us in the chat? And Tammy, while we wait, I was just a little bit curious about something. Can you tell us about something that you were interested in when you were a child? I had a lot of interest when I was a child, but one that really stood out that I'm still interested in today are animals. I loved having pets. Um, growing up around pets, I had a bird, I had dogs. So I've always, I'm always interested in pets and animals. And now I think about like horses and, and other animals, like bigger animals. Before when I was a child, it was just like the ones I had in my house, but I've always liked animals. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I was thinking something I was really interested in when I was a child was with playing with like baby dolls. I really loved to like hold them and to like put clothes on them and to pretend to feed them or to be like their mom. I really, I was interested in taking care of people and especially my baby dolls and they were really special to me. Now, let's look in the chat and see if there's some other friends who are sharing interesting things with us. It looks like there's a lot. Let me go up here. There well, are I some point out. are interested in um, oh, otters and armadillos, and they're very interested in flowers. 
What do you see, Tammy? I see garlic and fishing. But one thing I wanted to point out earlier, oh. someone made a comment and said their mom is a photographer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's pretty interesting. And, you know, there's all different kinds of photographers. So photographers always have something a little bit different that they take pictures of. I see someone's interested in the galaxy. Someone's interested in bananas. I wonder if they're interested in eating bananas or drawing bananas or painting them. I don't know. <laughs> there's someone interested in learning about other cultures and other countries. What I else see do we see? Puppies and owls, pets, kayaking, Ew. more animals. There's someone who's interested in old fashioned phones. That's pretty cool because you can learn about something that's old and that you maybe didn't use before and figure out how it's used. There's someone who's interested in colors and icebergs and feelings and meteors. And there's also some people who are interested in different movies or TV shows. There's people who are interested in going outside. And I think that there's some people who are interested in art, which we were looking at earlier today. You all are interested in so many things. Now we've been pretending to take pictures with Henry Clay's invisible imaginary camera, but now Tammy's gonna show us how we can take a closer look at interesting things by creating something together. It is art time. Thanks, Ariel. It seems like our friends have so many different interesting people and places and things that we could take pictures of. So today we're going to be photographers like Henry Clay Anderson, but we are going to create and design our own cameras like this one. Here's my camera. That's Ariel's camera. And we're going to use them to take pictures it's of interesting things so you may already have your camera cut out the cardboard cut out into the shape with a hole in the middle if you still need to do that please take this time to create your camera nessa will provide the directions in the chat and you can always make the hole later and please make sure to get a help, a help from an adult because it's important to be careful when cutting cardboard. I remember when I was cutting mine, it was really, really tricky to make that hole. So I think you're going to need an adult or grown up to help you with that today. So today you will need your pre cut cardboard camera. You'll need markers. And you'll need, or you'll need crayons. You can use both. Ariel has some cam or crayons there. So for our first step, we are going to, we're going to um, focus on our lens for the first step. But there, are, before that, there are all kinds of cameras. Some cameras look like the one that Henry Clay Anderson used, and some are just on our phones. There can be a lot of differences, but there are a few parts of the camera that are really important that all cameras have. So the first part we're going to focus on is today, but right now, is the lens. So we're going to look at the lens of this camera. We're going to look at the lens of, I have a camera here that's kind of like the one Henry Clay Anderson used. And there are the lenses right here. And I want to really touch them because I want to get them dirty. <laughs> but there's a lens there. And I have another camera with a really, 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 really big ones on the front oh so they come in all different kinds of size of, of different shapes and sizes and ariel do you want to show your lens yeah i have um this little bit of a smaller camera and i'll show it up close for everyone um and it looks like that and on the back it has a spot for when i'm taking a picture i could see and then, of course, we know, we might know that a lot of phones have cameras. I just was going to show okay. a lot of times on our phone, we have those little lenses right there to take our pictures. And the lens kind of works like an eye. So wherever you point the lens, if I'm pointing it here, it's going to take a picture of whatever it's pointing at. 
if I take, if I point it up here, it's gonna be a picture of the ceiling. So it works like an eye. So your lens can look really closely at something that you're interested in by zooming in. You have to turn the lens sometimes to zoom in. Or it can look at things far away when you zoom out that are far away. Remember how we zoomed in on the tree earlier? We saw, what did we see? A squirrel. So that was our, our lens zooming in really close to get that picture of a squirrel. So let's decorate our lens. And lenses are usually in the shape of a circle. So what, you're gonna, what you can do is take your crayon or your marker and maybe draw a circle around your lens, around the hole in your cardboard shape. So I'm gonna maybe turn mine over and kind of start working on that side. So remember your lens is like, what? An eye. It will take a picture of whatever you see. And one of the great things about cameras is that you can take them with you wherever you go. So when you go to places like um, a museum or on vacation, you can take pictures of all the things that you're interested in. So I have a question. Have any of you ever gone to a new place and brought your camera with you and taken a picture of what's there? And maybe let us know if you been somewhere where you've taken a lot of pictures and we visited a new place. Danny, I wanted to remind people, just in case you were wondering what that middle part could look like, look at how many circles. There's one circle, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. So when you're drawing, maybe what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to use different colors to go around and around my circle that's in the middle. That's going to make it very colorful. I'm going to try. So let us know in the chat if you've been someplace really special and you've taken a lot of pictures. You know, Tammy, like you were saying that it's a really important not to get the lens to touch the lens or to get it too dirty because then you might not be able to see through it anymore. And of course, with ours, it's just a pretend one, so there's not anything in it. But in this one, a lot of cameras have something you can use to cover the lens when you're not using it. And we can oh, yeah, them. I have. Yeah. I have a lens cap. Yep, you have one, too. I have one for my big camera. Oh, whoa. You put it right on, and it protects that lens. And it's like your eye. You don't really want to put your finger in your eye. Um, so you want to kind of protect that lens to make sure when we take a picture, it's nice and clear and right. Let's see any, someone takes pictures of butterflies in their garden. Someone's been to Florida, maybe taking pictures there. You know, when okay. people visit our museum, they oftentimes they're coming from another place. So they like to take pictures of the things they see in our museum. They like to take pictures of the monuments and um, the different uh, memorials that are near our museum. And I think it helps them to remember the place that they've been. And they remember their trip when they fly all the way back home and they're going to look through their pictures. They can remember that they visited our museum. And that's what taking pictures is mainly about, is remembering those moments and, wow, very colorful, and capturing them on film. Oh, someone says they've been to Disney. That's a good place <laughs> All right. So now that we have our lens decorated, we're going to move on to the next step. So now we can see through our camera. Our lens is ready. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we have enough light. Just like our eyes work, it needs light to see things. If you ever want to take a picture of something interesting when it's dark inside or outside, you need a light. Have you ever had your picture taken and a bright light on the camera goes off? Well, that's the flash. And depending on your camera, the flash is somewhere on top. So. I honestly don't have a camera with a flash on top. All my I cameras. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel. So mine, you can close this and it doesn't have to be up 
But if I need it, I have a special button that I can press and it pops up like that. Or I think sometimes if it's just dark outside, my camera might just know that it needs to let it pop. And then right here is where you will see, it's like a flashlight right there. See that? There it is. <laughs> so I can show you this camera doesn't have a flash, but it's a pretty old camera. And what would happen, you would buy something that would attach right here. It'd be a big flash that would go right here and it would take a picture. But you've noticed that the flashes, they're gonna be on top of a camera. And it's because it kind of acts like the sun. And the sun is above us, so it gives us so much light. But then when we use our flash, it kind of wants to act like the sun and shine from up top. So let's draw the flash on our camera. Now I'm and... drawing mine to be like, kind of like a, um, looking like it's flashing. So I'm gonna do a lot of like, almost make it look like a star, like a sun. So it's gonna have a lot of little flashes of, of light and lines around it. I'm gonna make mine yellow like the sun. Okay. And I make a little rectangle at the top. Maybe remember somewhere on the top. All right, let's take a second to go. Let's see. I think I've got mine. All right, we ready for the yeah. next step? Next. This is the most important step. So our cameras are almost ready to use. We have the lens to focus and see. Check. I can see my friends out there participating today. We have the flash. Here's my flash right here. Check when we need more light. Okay, so now I'm ready to take a picture. All right, let me focus. All right, the light is right. Oh, wait a minute, my camera's not working. Oh. You know what it needs? It needs that button that's on usually on top of a camera and it tells a camera when to take a picture. So on, I'm gonna show you on my cameras where you would take the picture. Well, Ariel, can you, well, I get ready. Can you show, yeah. can you show yours? I'm ready. Mine take a so while to right get ready. here is a picture, is a um, button right on the top of mine. So when I'm drawing mine, I'm gonna put a circle kind of button on mine. There's a lot of other buttons behind my camera, but that's the one I need to do our one, two, three, click, take of a picture. And here's a button on mine. I have to kind of wind it, because this is a film camera. So you have to wind it and then click. All right. And then on your phone, most of you have used a camera on your phone. On your phone, it's gonna be a button around the bottom of your phone. This is a picture of my, my doggy. There's gonna be a, a button on the bottom of your phone when you wanna take a picture. Just add our button on top. Got, I got my button. You can add more if you want, but we really need that button on top. All right, so our camera is ready to use, but we can still add some more decorations to it if you want to. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to add a few more things to mine. So let's take a second to add some decorations. And now this, where well, you can get really creative and draw anything you want, any way you'd like on your camera. A lot of cameras just look like this. They might just be one color. But because we're designing our own kind of camera today, you can add all kinds of colors and make it look just how you want. I'm adding some kind of like, I'm, I'm starting to add a line to go around just to make it look a little mm. bit more official of a camera. And then I was thinking of adding some colors. And then I was even thinking about maybe drawing like one thing on my camera that I'm interested in taking pictures of. Maybe it could be my reminder to myself to always take pictures of flowers or the galaxy like one of my friends said today <laughs> so let us know in the chats what you might be putting on your camera today i think i have a i'm gonna I have a sun on mine already i'm gonna add a few more shapes like a snowflake
So if you're adding anything on your camera, let us know what you're adding. Okay. Oh, someone's been to Mexico. Someone's making uh, their camera rainbow colored because they want to take pictures of the colorful things in the world. Ooh. There's a lot of, I wonder if you could ever catch a picture of a rainbow. Sometimes that's I think that's I've hard. seen pictures. Yeah, it might oh, not yeah, be I've easy. I've seen pictures of rainbows too. Yeah, it might not be easy to catch. You have to be looking really closely. Okay, I made my camera half blue and half orange. I'll show you just one moment, friends. Okay. I am I made, interested to see that camera. I made my two colors. Um, and then I added just some, these are like some swirls that I'm kind of using for roses too. They could be roses or swirls. Another friend has been to Cuba. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I think we're all ready. So, okay, yeah. our camera is ready to take pictures. Okay, let me do one finishing touch. Oh, go ahead. Okay, of course, everyone can always finish a little bit later if you're not done just yet, but we can practice at least seeing what it looks like. Okay, I'm done. That's how mine turned out. I see, oh, half blue, yep. Yeah. I see your flash, I see your button. Your camera is ready to go, Ariel. But first, now that our cameras are ready, what should we take a picture of first? Can I take a picture of all of our friends out there? Is That's that good okay? Idea. I'm interested in knowing how old our friends are. If you want me to take a picture, you can do this. If not, you can keep coloring. I'd like to know how old our friends are. So if it's okay for us to take a pretend picture of you, Okay, on the count of three, I want everyone to show me with their fingers how old they are, and that will be your pose for today, okay? So remember, show me with your fingers how old you are. And if you're four, if you're five, six. All right, you ready? Here we go. I'm ready. Okay, one, two, three, stop. Okay, I, I got, got my, my picture. picture. Thank you for letting me take a picture of you all today. I'm interested in seeing everyone's smile. So can I take a pretend picture of you too? All right. And when I count to three, everyone show me your biggest, biggest smile. And one, two, two three. three. Say cheese. Say cheese. Click. Thank oh. you, everybody. Great picture. So we have a question for you. Would you like to use your camera and take a picture of us, me and Ariel? Okay, let us know in the chat how you'd like us to pose today. We can make different faces or move our bodies in different ways. Any ideas? Mm -hmm. All right, so put in the chat, if you wanna use your camera and get a picture of us, Put in the chat how you'd like us to pose. All right, we'll wait for a few <gasps> friends. Someone share. has a silly pose. Should we try that? All right, yep, let's try one in the silly. Someone said silly pose. Okay, yep, yep, let's do it. All right, let oh, me think of a yeah. silly pose. Okay, I think we're ready for our silly pose. You want me? I'll, I'll count us down, all right? Okay. So, someone's interested in taking a picture of us doing a silly pose. Everyone, get your cameras ready. On You've got to get your cameras ready. We're not going to use our cameras. All right, on the count of three, we're going to do a silly pose for you. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> Did you get your picture? <laughs> you got your picture? Okay, good. What other pose should we do? 
Someone is asking us to give ourselves up with give ourselves a hug with a big smile. Okay, we can do that. I saw that one too. So someone's interested in taking a picture of us giving ourselves a hug. So everyone get your cameras ready. And on the count of three, Tammy and I will give ourselves some hugs. One, two, three. Did you get your picture? Okay, let's do one more pose. Let's see, we have a few different options. I wonder if we could do the, mm, let's do one, someone wants to see our hands. I think that could be an interesting picture. So everyone get your cameras ready. And on the count of three, Tammy and I are gonna show you our hands really, really up close, right? One, two, and three. <gasps> Did you get them? All right. I am super interested in knowing what else you are planning on taking a picture of with your pretend camera or your real cameras. As always, we would love, love, love and be super interested in seeing what you're interested in by tagging us on social media with the hashtag, hashtag Namak Kids or tagging the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Thank you for joining us this week, and we hope you enjoyed spending time with us and learning about the many ways that we can be. I hope you continue finding interesting things to explore, and I hope you take some selfies because you are interesting too. You are very interesting. Thanks for reminding us of that, Tammy. Join us next week when we'll be, in, we'll be creating art inspired by a different Joyful ABC activity book. J is for Just. I'm excited to learn more with you about what justice is and what you can do to make our world a better place. In the meantime, we hope you find joy and many ways to create, discover, and explore. See you next time. Bye, everyone.